Alright guys, I have a really cool trick for you today, which I found to be extremely useful when I was modeling this uh, panzer tank that we were creating a couple of days ago on our live stream. And uh, I'm just going to get right to it. I'm going to show you how this trick works. Okay, basically the idea is it make, this trick makes it very easy to take a detail that you've created on some part of the tank and move it to some other part of the tank under a different angle without having to align everything manually and make it all weird rotations and stuff like that. So I'll show you how this works. Let's say I want to take this little... Uh, uh, thing this little lid that I created here in the back I separated another one here on the side and let's say I want to bring it over here to the front of the tank under a different angle right this trick makes it very easy to just take this uh, take this object and just slide it over to the front right and it will just stay glued to the tank as if it's a sort of magnet or something right any angle that you move it to it will just turn perfectly and still stay perfectly connected to that part of the tank right now some of you probably recognize this trick because you saw it in blender secrets and uh, of course I have to give full credit for this uh, to Yan from uh, Blender Secrets, it's a phenomenal trick. He made a very uh, he, went, he made a video which went pretty viral. He got like a hundred, two hundred thousand views, or even more than that. I don't know, uh, which popularized this trick, right? I don't know where he got it from, but he he's the one that popularized it, as far as I'm aware. So I'm gonna share this with you guys, and I'm gonna show you another context for how this trick is very useful and how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna break it down a little bit more because his video was only very short. So I'm gonna show you how it works. And I'm also gonna add a little thing which I uh, I figured that works a little bit better with this trick. So stay tuned if you want to see how this trick works uh, in terms of the technical stuff, right? So the main idea here is that we, we want to have an object which is going to stay glued to the surface underneath the object, right? So it's going to be uh, snapped onto a face, and it has to. Uh, so the rotation of the object has to have the same angle as the normal of the face below it, right? So let me show you an example of what I mean by that, right? So if we add a plane over here, and uh, we, it's very important that the origin of this object that we create is uh, down at the bottom of the object. In this case, it's at the middle of the plane, right? So it's perfect. And we have to turn on our snapping tool over here. Now, in this little snapping menu, you have to make sure you have the same settings as I have over here. We, it's very important that we select face project and just copy this stuff as well that you see down here, right? And now when we move this plane around, you will see that anywhere we bring it, it will copy the angle of the face below it, as you can see on this face over here. It just snaps as soon as it crosses over this line, right? And we can also see the same thing. Maybe we can make this a little bit smaller to demonstrate a little bit better. The same thing happens over here, right? On these little uh, panels that we have. Okay, so if you put it on a screw or if you put it on a, anything over here, it will take the exact angle of the object or the face underneath it, right? So it will just copy the normal and it will be uh, kind of glued onto that face, right? It works pretty much like a magnet. All right, now let's do the same thing, but we're not going to use a plane. We're going to use an actual object, and we're going to demonstrate uh, how this works. All right, so let's say we want to take this lid from the back here, right? And we want to prepare this object and set it up so that we can do what I just demonstrated to you with a plane, right? Because the plane is useless. So we're going to go over here, and as you can see, this uh, uh, lid that we have here with the handle and everything, it's attached to this panel, okay? And the panel is attached to the body of the tank, right? So it's not very free, it's not very flexible, right? So what we want to do now is make this an independent object so that we can apply the setting to it and move this lid alone all over the tank, right? So in edit mode, with this panel selected, we're going to take, we're going to look at this thing and we're going to press L while we hover our mouse over it, right? The L, uh, the L button uh, just selects the loose part, right? So uh, it also we're gonna also gonna do the same thing with this handle because that's a separate loose part, right? So now that we have the whole thing selected, okay, we're gonna duplicate it and pull it to the side over here. At this point, it's still part of this same object, right? So if we go to object mode, this is still gonna move with the object. We want to separate it so it's a separate object, okay? So that when it's up here, we're gonna press P with everything selected uh, on this lid. We're gonna press P and separate the selection, okay? So now in object mode. This moves separately from this plane, and it also has its own separate origin from this plane, right? Or not the plane, but the panel on the tank, right? So since it has its own separate origin, the origin is still in the same place as the origin of the panel because we just separated it, so it doesn't know where else to put the origin, right? So we have to change that origin, okay? And let's delete these uh, little edge loops that we have over here on the bottom, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to place the origin, as we said with the plane, we need to place the origin at the bottom of the object, okay? So we can go to our side view, and that origin needs to be exactly in, in the middle of this circle, this lowest circle uh, on this object, right? So we're going to select that edge loop with Alt right click, and we're going to press Shift S and snap the cursor to the selected part, right? So the 3D cursor is going to snap into the, uh, the middle of this circle, which is exactly at the bottom of the tank, uh, or at the bottom of this object, as you can see over here, right, when we zoom in. And now with our 3D cursor there, we're going to go up here to Object, all right? Make sure you don't click somewhere else to place the 3D cursor somewhere else, right? Object. Set origin, and we're going to set the origin to the 3D cursor, right? And now, if you look closely, you can see this little orange dot snapped to the 3D cursor, right? Which means now, if we rotate this object, it's going to rotate around its median point, around the 
uh, the origin that we have there. Assuming that the pivot point is at the median point. If you set it to 3D cursor, it's going to rotate around the 3D cursor, but by default, it's median point, right? Same thing, if we scale it, it's going to scale from this point exactly, right? As opposed to 3D cursor, if we have 3D cursor over there, right? Anyway, so we have our origin in place. And now we can take this object anywhere that we want. For example, we can snap it over here to the front of the tank or something like that. So we can also place our 3D cursor on one of these vertices or with this whole face, but with Shift S, cursor to select it. And then we're just going to press Shift S and selection the cursor. Now there are 3D cursors over here. It's going to move the object. So the origin of the object is exactly on the 3D cursor, right? So now we have this perfectly on top of this uh, surface on the top of the hull of the tank, right? And we can do the same thing anyway. We can snap it to the front of the tank if we want to. Now, at the front of the tank, we have a slightly different angle, which is where this trick is going to come in handy, right? Because if we want to align it with the right angle, we have to rotate it. We have to go to side view, find the right angle, and then we have to adjust it and zoom in to make sure it's exactly the right angle so we don't have any weird shading issues or any problems like that. It's a bit of a pain to try to do that, right? And you, this is a simple surface. It can get a lot more complicated than that. So, you know, if it's a bent surface, then we're going to have some trouble with this, right? So the manual way is not really good. So now that we have this separate object, we can go back to using the same trick that we use with the plane with this snapping thing, right? So we press, we activate the snapping tool over here and while well, we make sure that we have these settings over here. And now this object is going to snap to the surface of the tank, right? So it's going to snap and get aligned uh, with the face below it, right? So it's going to have the perfect angle that we want, right? So this works pretty good for now, but there's still a slight problem that we're going to fix when it comes to this, right? It, it only works all right because it's a completely flat surface. But there's still a very clear, sharp edge over here. Maybe we want to make it look like it's welded or a smooth part of this or something. But also if we come to an angle like this, we're going to see a hole on the underside of the object. We don't want that. This does not make any sense. It's completely unrealistic as we can see inside this object, right? So maybe you can just keep it over here. But if it's a round surface, if it's a smooth, bumpy surface, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to need to manually fit it onto the face, right? Maybe I can show you a little bit better what's going on if I take this object up here to this sphere that we have. All right, when we bring it to a round surface or a smooth surface, you can see them on the sides, there are some gaps, right? And no matter what you do, you would have to push it down pretty far to make it to fit correctly. But you know, it's still, it still does not look like it should look, right? So now the thing is that we have to have a round smooth edge connecting this object with the surface below, right? So the first thing we have to do is make a sort of edge or sort of angle here, which can be, which can connect this object to the surface below, okay? So let's take our, uh, let's set our pivot point to the medium point, okay? And we're going to select this edge loop at the bottom of our object. We're going to press E to extrude, then we're going to snap it back with the right mouse button, all right? And then we're just going to scale that up a little bit to, until it's something like this, right? So we add a kind of rim around this object. Now then we're going to select this inner uh, edge loop over here. And with Control B, we're going to add a bevel. And we're going to add a couple of edges, let's say, uh, let's say this many edges. Don't do too many, but you can do four or five uh, edge loops. It's going to be something like this, right? Maybe our rim is a little bit too big, so we're going to scale that down just a little bit. And then we're going to add a couple of edges like this, right? So now we have a nice smooth round. Well, we have uh, two little uh, smooth shading here. But if with smooth shading, this makes it a nice smooth edge at the bottom here. But it still doesn't connect very well to the bottom. You can see that there's still a clear gap between, uh, uh, between uh, our object and the object below, right? So we have to kind of glue these individual vertices to the, to the uh, surface below them, right? And the best way to do that was using vertex groups, right? So we're going to select all these vertices which we want to be influenced by the surface below, like the, the ones that we just created here with the bevel, not the ones at the top, just the ones at the bottom. And we're going to go over here to vertex groups and we're going to add a new vertex group. We're going to make sure that's assigned to these vertices which we have selected. And now we have to adjust the weight, which is essentially how much influence this vertex group is going to have over which of the vertices, right? So we want these vertices at the bottom to be fully affected, to be very, very heavily dragged down to the surface so they're completely glued to the surface. Well, these are just going to be pulled a little bit, right? I'll show you what that means uh, in practice, right? So we select this entire edge loop at the bottom here. And we're going to set the weight over here in the vertex group all the way to one. And we're going to assign that uh, with this selection over here, okay? And you can check that over here by selecting a vertex. You should have this little menu on the side in the vertex weights uh, uh, little uh, area over here. You can see that the vertices at the, at the top, when you select them, the number over here is zero. But if you select the ones at the bottom to which we assign this weight, they have a weight of one, right? All of these in this uh, circle below, they have a weight of one. So now we want to select the second edge or the second edge loop here so next to the one with the uh, full weight. And we're going to set the weight to 0 0.8 for these, okay? So slightly less than the previous edge loop and we're going to assign that. And you're gonna see the same thing, right? So these vertices up here, they have a, a, a weight of 0 0.8 as opposed to one and as opposed to zero, let's say. 
and then we just kind of slowly uh, reduce the weight of the edges as we go inwards. So the next edge loop is going to have a weight of 0.6 or vertex loop, right? A weight of 0.6 and we're going to assign that uh, to the uh, edge loop and we can see that it works fine. The next one is going to have 0.4 and you can see where this is going. We slowly go down towards zero and the last one's going to have 0.2 or something, maybe even less than that 0.1. And then uh, as you can see, it's like a slow progression uh, towards less and less influence, right? So let me show you how this is going to work and what these vertex weights are going to do. We take this object now, this uh, lid that we have, and we can move it around and it'll slide all over the place if we have this snapping enabled. But we have to go to our modifiers, okay? And we're gonna add a modifier and we're going to add the shrink wrap modifier, okay? Now the shrink wrap modifier, if you don't know how it works, it basically just takes a surface and, it's, and it glues it onto another surface below it, right? So it's, it changes the mesh, so it's not exactly what we want, but this, this shrink wrap modifier is a very useful tool which is going to help us with what we're doing here, okay? So in the shrink wrap modifier, we can select a vertex group. In this case, we have group, whatever we, whatever you name your group, right? For us, for me, it's group. Uh, just it's just called group. And then if I select a target object, I name this sphere over here. I name that ball. Okay, you can rename it with F two. If you press F two with an object selected, you can rename it. So this object is called ball, which means that's going to be our target object. That's the ball, right? And now when we enable our snapping here again, where where it snaps the object uh, to the face below. You can see that when we move this around, it's perfect and it's very smooth and it's very round and there's no gaps between the edges. Now, you might have some problems with uh, with the edges between uh, between this object you have here and the object below because you might see a very sharp, clear edge below them like you can see over here, okay? You can fix this edge. I won't show you how to do that. I'll leave that uh, to uh, Blender Secrets. He has another video which I'm going to leave in the description below. Go check that video out to fix that problem. It's very clear, it's very useful and it's a very useful technique to, to fix that problem, okay? But what I'm going to show you now is another trick to just make this a little bit more, uh, a little bit more convenient or a little bit more practical to use. Because you can see right now, this this object here will only stay glued to the surface below if we have this snapping enabled. And if we go to the, with the snapping enabled, if we move it too far, it's going to start leaving the surface and it's going to start stretching and bending in weird ways. It kind of looks like the guy from Dune, right? So one way to fix this is to use another uh, another uh, tool called shrink wrap, but this time it's a constraint and it's not a modifier, okay? So this time what we do is we select this object and we go to our constraints uh, constraints tab over here on the side. And in this constraints tab, we're going to add a shrink wrap relationship constraint, right? You open this menu, it's all the way on the right over here, all right? And now when we select, uh, when we open up this little menu, it's very similar to the shrink wrap modifier, okay? So we're gonna select our target again, we're gonna set that to ball, and we're gonna say, uh, in the align to normal menu, we're going to, we're gonna tick that, but we're not gonna have it on X, we're gonna set it to Z, okay? So it's gonna set to the Z axis, and this way, we don't have to have our snapping enabled up here, and it cannot leave the surface. So it is just glued to this surface that we have here. And by the way, it's not going to pick up the bumps of any other object other than this object. See, without the constraint and only with the snapping, if we have this object, it's going to take up the surface of, uh, it's gonna take the angle of any surface underneath it, even if it's something that we don't want, like this, right? So we don't want that. We only want to take the surface of the ball, right? So we can, uh, we can disable the snapping uh, with the tool up here and we can just enable our shrink wrap modifier and then it's only going to take the angle of the ball below it, right? So in this case, that's what we want and you have a little bit more control with this tool and it makes it a little bit easier because your object also can't take off the surface if you move your mouse outside of the object, right? And now you can see for yourself how this can be extremely useful. For me, if I'm uh, moving this object around, it's not going to leave any weird gaps anywhere. In this case, if I, if, let's say I'll show you an extreme example of, we probably don't want this to happen, but it can be useful for you in some other less extreme cases. If we put this detail over this corner over here, it's going to sort of be uh, connected to the, to the corner right there, and it's going to be smoothly welded to the corner, right? So it's not gonna have any weird gaps, any, any, any terrible deformations. If it's a small angle, it's actually gonna look pretty good. Like this looks completely unrealistic because the lid doesn't make any sense to you, right? But you, can, you know what I'm talking about. If it's a smaller angle, this is something that's going to help you a lot in preventing these little uh, little problems like that. And it makes it a lot easier to take a detail and copy it another part, right? It's something that we often do with tanks is we create one detail on one part and then we have to use that to duplicate and then move it to other parts of the tank because the same details repeat many times, right? So it's a very useful trick whether you're doing organic modeling or hard surface modeling and I hope this helped some of you guys.